going to turn now to the House passed $770 billion defense policy bill, which includes what's being called historic reforms to how the military investigates and prosecutes sexual assault. But it doesn't go far enough, and a bipartisan group of lawmakers are making sure they are letting this be known. And one of those is New York Senator Kirsten uh, Gillibrand. It is good to have you back here with us on the program. This is an issue we've talked to you about on this show before and you have been fighting for for decades. So th th we started here and you see everywhere historic reforms. Where does it still come up short? Well, it's not independent. The whole point of these reforms was to create a prosecution system that was independent of the chain of command. But unfortunately, what the House did is they created a special prosecutor, but the commander still retains this, this aspect called the convening authority. The convening authority at the beginning of the trial says, this trial is convened by, by Commander X. So he sets the tone. Second, he gets to pick the jury. He gets to pick the expert witnesses. He gets to decide which depositions. If someone's going to be dismissed from the military, he gets to decide that. These are enormous powers that are still resting with the commander. So even though we now have this new prosecutor, this special trial counsel, even though the label on him is independent, it's not independent of the chain of command, which is what survivors have asked for. It's what every veterans group has endorsed. It's what 29 attorney generals have asked for. They wanted a independent, trained military prosecutor making these decisions outside of the chain of command uh, and to not have this command control. We wanted to move the whole convening authority to these prosecutors. And unfortunately, uh, the chairman of the House and Senate committee blocked that. Okay, well, Senator, help our, our viewers understand because they hear, okay, we, allegations of sexual assault, we want an independent body to look into it. What's yeah. the problem with that? And so where do you see, why would, uh, whether members of Congress or uh, military commanders, the Pentagon, be resistant to handing this over and making the whole process independent and transparent? The commanders want to retain control. And what happens in the system today, last year there was approximately 20,000 sexual assaults and rapes and unwanted sexual contact. Only about 7,000 reported and only about 200 ending conviction. So very few cases are ending in any kind of conviction. The commander, because they choose in the current system, the judge, the jury, the prosecutor, the defense counsel, they decide everything. If the commander's biased and doesn't believe the women and men who come forward, or if the commander uh, isn't well trained and just doesn't understand these kinds of cases, he doesn't prosecute them. He doesn't move them forward. And so because the commander is still retaining so much authority over these cases, the perspective and the perception of survivors and plaintiffs is going to be that it's not independent, that the commander still has his thumb on the scale of justice. And that's a problem. The other problem with what the House bill did is it only pulled out a few crimes. Um, there's only 11 crimes removed. We wanted a bright line at all serious crimes. We removed 38 crimes. And we did that purposefully because we don't want this to appear that it's just a new legal system for people suffering from sexual assault, which disproportionately is women. And the perception will be this is a special legal system for women. Mm. Women are already marginalized in the, in the military and discriminated against in the military. And that's why Joni Ernst, the former commander, mm. a veteran, a Republican senator, and Tammy Duckworth, Democratic, former commander, uh, former service member, united on this bill because they wanted to give no preference uh, to plaintiffs or defendants. They wanted all crimes to be dealt with in this independent way so you didn't create a pink court and you didn't marginalize women further. Senator Gillibrand, I know you've been at this and this is uh, absolutely uh, the work you have been doing on this for uh, really over a decade. Uh, and please, by all means, come on back and we'll continue to discuss. And we do want to take a moment here and everyone say happy birthday to the senator from New York. It is your birthday. Thank and you. um, I guess it's only up from here if you start with us uh, and have to talk yes, to TJ it's today. Now way to start the day, <laughs> talking right. to America and <laughs> well, fighting for survivors. Well, Senator Gillibrand, really, happy birthday to you. Thank you so much. Always good to see you. God bless. Right. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.